So I would be talking to you about epithelial mapping in refractive surgery and uh, Dr. Rohit Shetty has set the ball rolling. It is cause of, uh, if you don't do epithelial mapping in several of the refractive surgery uh, cases, this could be one of the reasons why patients could be unhappy. So although keratoconus is the most common reason for deferring the uh, refractive surgery, uh, almost 17.5 to 24%, the incidence of post-classic ectasia, if you see, in 2001, it was 0.6%, has re reduced to 0.03% in 2018 by identifying early keratoconus with the current topographers. And still, it has come down, but it has not completely vanished. But still, some patients with normal topography will develop post-classic ectasia, and I'm not saying it is only because of abnormal epithelium or epithelium uh, remodeling at Lucker, but that is one of the causes. So the subclinical cases probably are missed due to the masking properties of the epithelium, which has different ways of remodeling depending upon the type of refractive surgery that is performed. If you look at the properties of the corneal epithelium, the thickness of the corneal epithelium is 54 plus minus 5 microns in the normal corneas. And the refractive power of the epithelium, it varies. Uh, it is 0.85 diopters, but the range is from 0.29 to 1.6 diopters at the 3.6 millimeter diameter zone. And this epithelial remodeling uh, is uh, linked to the rate of the change in the curvature. So if you have a steeper cornea, then on the cornea, which has a steeper part of it, then the epithelium is going to be thinner there as compared to flatter cornea or flatter uh, curvature areas, uh, which are going to have a thicker epithelium. So uh, this is to say that epithelium thickening will occur in focally flat corneas and epithelial thinning will occur in focally steep regions. Now, if you see the epithelial, epithelial thickness variability, now there have been various instruments which have looked at epithelial thickness. And uh, if you look by OCT, then the thickness is 53.4 microns. By uh, the, uh, uh, the VHFDU, the, it is a little thicker. Uh, probably remains just the same. And several workers have uh, also documented that the thickness uh, may be uh, different. Now, again, if you look at apex to the periphery uh, thickness, then that would also be different because the apex thickness, apex is generally uh, thinner as compared to the periphery. And in terms of the periphery, also the peripherally inferior and nasal epithelium is found to be thicker in the normal healthy eyes. Now this has a bearing, the thickness is, normal thickness has a bearing on the way we do the corneal refractive surgery. For, for instance, if we do radial keratotomy, then uh, those cases, the epithelial response is central thickening. And the typical outcome is probably there would be no impact. But if it's in increasing myopia for which the radial keratotomy is being done, then the thickening will be much more in these cases and probably you can have regression. Uh, likewise, if there is myopic, LASIK, or PRK that has been done, the epithelial response following these two procedures is also central thickening. And the typical outcome is no impact, but if it is an atypical outcome, there could be again regression. Now, especially at the area of the, uh, and especially more with our older type of machines, where we didn't have a transition zone, but we just had uh, a zone uh, which went uh, from the, 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 there was no transition zone present. So in those cases, again, this thickening would be more marked as compared to the newer generation machines where the transition zone is present. But then this is one cause of regression and this would lead to increasing myopia. If you have hyperopic classic or PRK, which is done, then the epithelial response is that you would have central thinning and peripheral thickening because that is the area where you ablated. And so the epithelial cells will, uh, the response will be more exuberant in the peripheral part as compared to the central part. Again, the typical outcome would be that probably there'll be no impact, but a typical outcome would be that there'll be instability of refraction with diurnal fluctuations and regression of the effect. Now, another procedure which can cause uh, this is uh, epithelial remodeling is corneal cross-linking. And the, uh, the classical epithelial response is that the area in which you have actually cross-linked or the thinner areas uh, in, in the areas of maximal thickness there'll be thinning which will be there because of the procedure of the cross-linking itself. But in the areas of the maximal thinning, there will be thickening. So the typical outcome will be that there is an epithelial regularity and the epithelium improves and it becomes more stable because the areas which are thinned out are made thicker and the areas 
which are thicker are made thinned out so a typical outcome of course is going to be that it reduces the epithelial regularity again with larger ablation diameter the less dramatic rate of change of curvature occurs and less epithelial remodeling will be there to cause refractive regression that is why in higher refractive errors this again plays a very important role now there have been studies of lasik versus prk versus smile and in not too many studies but after hyperopic lasik and prk in which stroma is ablated peripherally to create the uh, steeper central curvature epithelium does thicken peripherally and whenever they compared lasik with prk in only a couple of studies they actually did not find any difference in terms of the uh, epithelial remodeling now uh, this is just to show that epithelium thickening will be directly proportional to the amount of myopic correction and some people even have uh, uh, linked this uh, to the curvature and some also to the stromal thickness but i think uh, the more recent studies have shown that there is no not much of relationship between the epithelium response and the uh, stromal thickness now uh, one it, it the epithelial maps they help to differentiate between early corneal ectasia and contact lens warpage because in early corneal ectasia at the region of the maximal corneal power the epithelium will be the thinnest but in case of contact lens warpage at the region of the maximum corneal uh, power the epithelium is going to be thickest so if there is a if there is a uh, confusion between the two then this can be sorted out by this then again uh, epithelium thickness in ptk has been used uh, more often than in uh, uh, than in refractive procedures because it helps you to plan your treatment outcomes better so better outcomes can be obtained with sequential customized therapeutic keratectomy once you know that uh, where is the epithelial thin thickened and where it is not again for corneal dystrophies and more so for complications after refractive surgery like you have corneal epical scarring after hyperopic lasik then in those cases epithelial mapping uh, can be done and those areas can be uh, targeted now uh, although there are several instruments which can measure the epithelium thickness but it is the anterior segment oct which we use most often very high uh, frequent uh, high frequency ultrasound gives you a wider area but uh, asoct gives you an optimum area and ms39 topographer which is the new uh, uh, tool which has come in the market combines the presidio disc corneal topography with high resolution asoct uh, based uh, tomography and you have all these but uh, basically i think rt view is the one which is uh, very good we do have ksr2 but we don't have experience with cirrus hd uh, high definition oct if you look at this case for instance uh, this is a case of keratoconus so there is corneal thinning which can be seen here and uh, uh, epithelial thinning is present here and just adjacent to that area which is not so steep there is epithelium thickening which is seen now this is a case in which cross linking has sorry this is a case in which the cross linking has already been done so you can notice that there is a decrease in the size of the cone that is there and if you look at the epithelial map the, there is some amount of regularization also which is occurring after cross linking and because there is haze which is present this is picked up by the asoct now if you do have ms39 this part is taken care of and this will not be there so some of the cases of ectasia which are erroneously picked up by pentacam will be clarified by ms39 because that takes care of the haze part now again this is a case of, of of a lady who went and underwent lasik uh, uh, and had slightly decentered ablation in the right eye and in the late post operative period she had complaints of visual disturbances in the same eye so again uh, if you see that there are uh, abnormal areas of uh, focal region of epithelium remodeling which is being seen on the anterior segment oct and in all such early cases of regression you do prescribe steroids and anti glaucoma medications and then regression is taken care of as in this case now again this is a case of myopic regression and when you do give steroid and anti glaucoma medications partly because of this epithelial maps if you see this is taken care of so to summarize the epithelial thickness helps to differentiate the suspicious cases from the normal cases it customizes the type of the refractive surgery it unmasks the epithelial irregularities uh, which are responsible for blurred vision in the post op period and it helps you to plan procedures which are more customized more so in treatment of collagen cross linking such as tcat and trek 
and ms39 i think uh, when it comes it is going to be a great tool uh, i'm sure i mean uh, it has come but uh, uh, when we have more experience on it it will help to differentiate the two progression from the pseudo progression in keratoconus especially in cases where pentacam comparative map shows obvious progression and uh, there are features of corneal haze so thank you very much for your kind